What's up guys, it's me, LSB Spectra here, another video for Dwarf Fortress, not a let's play this time. This time I want to tell you how to use the Lazy Noob pack that I use uh, for this game. It's really great for uh, players, I think most people actually use this, if not, it's a great tool for starters, beginners, even intermediate people. I'd consider myself beginner to intermediate and I use it uh, consistently. There's a link to this page in the description that I'll put there. Um, if I don't, please let me know because I want to intend to put it there. You can click this download button right here and then you can download it. I already have it downloaded. Uh, what you'll see is you'll get a zip file that's called uh, Paired to X Errant Starter Pack. I have all the past starter packs for different versions that you see here. It'll come in a zip. You unzip it. You go into the file and you'll see this lazy new pack uh, starter. You'll go ahead and you can ignore the rest of this. You can run this, allow it to run on your computer, wait for it to launch, here we go, and you'll get this window, uh, the lazy new pack. So this allows you to kind of modify and help you run Dwarf Fortress, and so we're going to go ahead and kind of go through all the different options. So you have a bunch of these gameplay options that allow you to change what happens. So you got a population cap, a child cap, because children could be annoying. Um, this can also help with your processing uh, power, how much your computer can handle, so you want to limit some certain things. You can have a strict population cap, uh, a visitor cap for people that come and just visit your fort. You can allow invaders or not, so like goblins and stuff like that. The amount of soldiers in an invasion, uh, this can help with uh, your computer's processing of the game. A monster invasion cap, and I like it says limit of number of uh, enemy monsters during an invasion. Uh, whether you want to allow cave-ins, allow the weather, allow artifacts to happen, uh, whether you want temperature to actually be a thing, and tomb, whether you need to in, uh, entomb pets, uh, whether you want to allow aquifers, uh, the graze coefficient is like how much grazing animals need to graze, starting labor skills, I don't fully understand this one, but it seems like it's like assigning skills based on... Uh, whether it's their skill level, unit type, or whether you don't want them to assign labors at all at the beginning and whether you should. So I just keep it on skills. But these are the settings I keep it on. And it seems to run pretty well for me. Uh, next comes Embark, Embark Profiles. So when you embark in a site, you have these different profiles for what skills and what type of dwarves you can uh, embark with. You can even set up your own personalized one. But they have a whole bunch of ones right here that you can do. That you can have and I'm pretty sure that there's some you can even download um, and put in manually you want but I typically just keep default profiles selected but there's advanced profiles starting scenarios and so you can select them all and they'll all be in there but I I typically just run with the default unless I'm customizing my own but I'm sure in the future I'll, I'll look at all these I think I have in the past done a starting scenario but uh, that's what these are key bindings I keep it on Vanilla Dwarf Fortress because I have a 10 key and everything and I don't typically use my mouse, but there's different options based on the computer you're running at, whether you have a computer with a laptop with no numpad, whether you want to be able to use your mouse more, etc. You can still technically use your mouse a little bit with the Vanilla Dwarf Fortress, but I'm assuming with mouse allows you to do more. So this is the options area. So let's go to graphics. So there's old school Vanilla ANSI, which you haven't seen me play with. I typically play with the Phobius uh, graphics pack. It makes things look nice to me. It allows me to see things better. And I think it's easier for when I'm doing these Let's Plays for you to understand what's happening on the screen. So you can select uh, all these different graphic packs. There's other ones you can download, but these are a couple of the more famously used ones. A lot of people use Space Fox or Phobius that I've seen that are they stick with vanilla. Maybe one day I'll do vanilla for you guys, but it's just harder to understand. Um, you can even customize certain things by picking specific ones out of specific things but that gets advanced and complicated and i don't typically go into that um and there's a whole bunch of different display options i keep it on this and it works just fine i haven't dove into it a lot so you're welcome to look at this and see how it uh does this for you if you need to mess around with this go ahead and if you really want me to look into this more i can but for now i'm not going to Next is utilities. These are a whole bunch of different, you could almost call them hacks for the game. Um, I don't use a lot of these. The ones I use the most is called Dwarf Therapist. So you just double click on this here and it'll launch. Um, it needs to have a game running, but essentially what it'll do is it'll show you a list of all your dwarves and show you their happiness level and what they're kind of thinking in their personalities and stuff without having to search for it individually in game. It's really useful to check to see how 
uh, your dwarves are doing. Uh, here at the end of this video, I'll try to dive into a game so you can really see how this looks. But for now, we'll continue on. So you're welcome to look at all of these. Some of them are, are fairly great to work. Quick Fort allows you to like copy and paste Fort designs, options like your bedroom setup and things like that. Um, other than that, some of these are like isometric views, all sorts of different things. I don't look at it too much, but I'll be diving into more of it as I do this Let's Play series, I think. But the one I, I use is Dwarf Therapist. I use it a lot. <laughs> I haven't yet in the Let's Play series, but that's because we haven't had a lot of dwarves yet. Next is Advanced. So you can enable the sound, take it down. You can enable a frames per second calculator. You can say when you launch the game, you don't want the intro movie. You can state whether you want it intro, uh, windowed or full screen when you launch, how big you want the window when you launch. Um, this is the part that I find the most useful. I suggest having an autosave because this game still crashes. Technically, this game isn't finished. <laughs> Technically speaking, even though it's a very finished game in my opinion. It still has bugs, but it's it's a very complete game in my opinion. But I'd keep the autosave on seasonal just in case your game crashes, which does happen. Um, I like to pause on save. Um, I like to pa pause on load. And I like to compress the saves. That's just how it always was. Uh, it says keep this on unless you experience problems with your saves. So yeah, just keep it on. But I like to keep this. You can have it on yearly or none, but I like it on seasonal. That way I also know when the season's over. Um, so yeah, you can also set your priority, process priority, and stuff like that. So if you need to give your uh, processor, give Dwarf Fortress more processing priority on your computer, you can. I keep it on normal because I'm also recording at the same time I'm playing, which is difficult on my machine, but uh, it gets through it. Next is Dwarf Hack, DF Hack. Um, honestly, I haven't done a lot of this. Multi-level view was just on by default for me. I don't even use it, but there's lots of different things here. Eventually, I'll probably like use Enhanced gameplay which adds human merchants and elvish diplomats but essentially there's like a automatic job assigner you can hide the df hat console you can uh, do more mouse control options uh performance tweaks if you're having troubles running the game um but it, i think it does also change some of the gameplay so you can enable this if you need to i suggest you don't if it's running just fine um, but if you have an older computer, you might want to try enabling this. And you just click on it, and it turns green to enable it. Uh, Stone Sense Isometric View, like it says, it gives you an isometric view of the game, I think, on a separate window. Um, so, I mean, use it as you want. Um, I I don't use it a lot. I pre I'm sure in the future I'll use Enhanced Gameplay for sure, and I may even mess around with Isometric View, but for now. And this was just enabled by default, so... I don't, I don't think I actually use it. <laughs> I don't think I ever have, but it was just enabled, so I've left it. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, other than that, once you've selected everything, you just click play, play Dwarf Fortress, and it launches, and, and that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Um, I think in the next video, I, I did in the past a brief overview of starting a game, and I, I feel really bad about it because I felt like it was a really pathetic video that I didn't go into enough detail. And so I think in the future I will do a video that um, goes over how to set up and embark and really go through the nitty gritty details of setting up a world like I've done with this lazy new pack on through the nitty gritty of everything. Um, but for now you can reference that other video to see how to start up a world if you need to. Uh, but you should be able to follow along and the game exploits itself fairly decently. So, and part of the fun of this game is figuring stuff out. So I can understand if you don't watch all of my videos. Um, other than that, uh, I hope this helped you understand the lazy new pack. Um, and again, there'll be a link in the description below where you can download it. They release versions somewhat frequently, so keep an eye out for uh, new ones that come out. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. See ya!